Miami, Lone Depot Park. Major League Baseball on tap. It's the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Miami Marlins. John Shabby and Chris Singleton on the call. And seeing the big bat in the lineup so far this year, Otto Lopez leads the team at OPS. So he's the guy that looks to slug and basically make things happen for them offensively. Just a machine in terms of production at the plate. He'll take his walks. He'll barrel up the baseball. He'll hit the ball in the gaps. He'll hit the ball over the fence. So talk about a guy going good. That's him right now. And he's a bat that you want to stay away from if you're the pitcher. So almost ready to get underway. Now the starting pitcher in this one, Trevor Rogers. And Chris, he's a guy that gets better when things get tough. Well, you know this guy wants to be better than that. I mean, the ERA is bloated. He understands that he's got to put his team in a better position to win ball games. And at this point, you have to forget about your own individual stats, and you have to go out there and attack and try to get that W. And if you do that, you'll look up, and most likely that ERA will have dropped over time. Next pitch is outside. And that misses off the outside edge. Got him swinging. Pulled the string of the changeup. You know, variant speeds can be just as useful for a pitcher as movement. As you see right there, it really was not a great location. But the fact that the velocity change had the hitter off balance, and that's all you got to do sometimes. Willie Adamas stands in. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. Inside corner, and that's called a strike. Adamas goes six foot one, 28 years old, and he was born in the Dominican Republic. And one and two. The lefty fires. Knocks that one away and we'll do it again. Three. Swings and misses. Struck him out. He's really good hitting the baseball the other way. So credit the pitcher for having him out in front of that pitch. Clearly he had him fooled. And now the rookie second baseman, Joseph Ortiz. And that one clips the corner. Two outs. Breaking ball inside. One ball, one strike. That's a really good take right there. Slider down and in. Very difficult to get on the same plane and do anything with. That one the other way. Bell steps on the bag. And Milwaukee is set down in order. Nobody left for Milwaukee. And now the Marlins will have a crack at things. No score. Back after this on the show. here at Lone Depot Park and starting this one number 85 base runners are tough to come by with him out there Chris well he brings into this one an excellent strikeout to walk ratio on the season and when you consider the amount of swings and misses that he gets and the fact that he's not issuing free passes that's going to make him more economical in his pitch count allow him to move into the middle and deeper part of ball games so we'll see if that remains true in this one Jazz Chisholm Jr. Now in the box. Comes up empty with a swing there. Strike two. Slider misses outside. Hard 
ground ball, base down. So a man on base to start the inning. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Couldn't get any air under it, but he smoked that ball back up the middle. Timing was just perfect. Got great wood on it, and there's just no chance for the infielders with how hard he hit it. And now here's the Marlins DH, Brian De La Cruz. And fouled off. Rudder takes off. One one. It's a pitch out. Throw. Yeah. Tag. Ow. Great throw by Gary Sanchez. Usually when you see a team try to steal a base in the early innings, it tells you they want to be aggressive on offense, try to force the defense to make plays and slow them down. That's exactly what they did right there. So we'll see if that caught stealing changes the offensive approach moving forward. One down, base is empty. And that one missing low. The next offering misses. And now three and one. One out, base is empty. Three one, and he couldn't come up with it. Pretty easy walk right there. Last pitch wasn't even much to think about. Here's Josh Bell. The switch hitter batting right. Slap the other way, foul. De La Cruz, the base runner at first with one out. Next offering misses, and it's a ball to strike. On the ground to third, and it finds its way through for a hit. They fired in quickly. So it's first and second with only one away. Now just a nice job coming through in a pretty high leverage spot right there. Just one of those seam high base hits through the infield. He just kind of rolled over on it a little bit, but sometimes those can find a hole and get you a knock. And now, Jesus Sanchez. And that one just misses. A ball and no strikes. Two on, one out. That one's in there. That's strike one. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. The one-one. Right field, down the line, and that one slices down. And a pitch. Foul ball still, one and two count. One out. Runners at first and second. This is inside. The count now two and two. Swing and a ball lifted left field. Pulls up on it, and that's a base hit. Heading for the play. Safe. A perfect example right there. That plate discipline, it pays off. The deeper he gets into a count, the more comfortable he becomes, and he usually wins the battle. First and second, one out. Stepping in, the long ball threat, Jake Berger. Fastball for a strike. 0-1. At this point, the clean inning is over. Got to settle in, focus on the hitter, and get out of it with minimal damage. And a pitch. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Runners at first and second with one gone. Just missed. If he's able to connect on that, look out. That one almost got him. Right. 
Here comes a pitch. Just oh, off the outside corner, and it's two and two. And that one is inside. He's really tightening up his hitting zone with two strikes here. I love it. Nick Gordon waits on deck for Miami. Hard ground ball base now. Coming home. Fires to the plate. It's off the mark, and he scores. Well, it comes through clutch with the RBI single. That was big. Pretty tough for the infielders to do anything with that one. He pulled it hard into the outfield, and even when you keep it on the ground, it feels great when you hit a missile like that. Now the left fielder, Nick Gordon. And that one hit to first. The throw to second. What a double play that was. Inning over. But two runs for him, and they jump ahead. Second inning coming up here in South Florida. It's the Marlins two, and the Brewers nothing. New inning getting started, and now it's the catcher, Gary Sanchez. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. Rogers back to work. This one popped up. Lopez has a beat on it. Puts it away for the out. That is good. The center field, number 16, Blake. Perkins. Blake Perkins up now for the Brewers. Perkins having a lot more success on the road this season. Oh Just missed. Next offering is in for a strike. Looks like a really good fastball today. You can hear that catcher's mitt popping. Looking forward to hearing a lot of that one in this one. Base is empty one away here at the top of the second. Way inside gets out of the way. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off speed to the fastball, and the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. One down, base is empty. Runs it up to 96 to record the punch out. Next for the Brewers, Andrew Monasterio. And that one in the air center field. Corrals it, and that'll do it. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And now for the Marlins, Otto Lopez. As the lefty gets to work. And that gets the top of the zone for a strike. Swings here and blasts one left field. And it is gone! His second homer of this series. And they boost their lead. It's 3-0. And that shot makes their grip on the lead even tighter. Well, he put a really nice swing on that one, and everything was on time, took a direct path to the ball, excellent extension, and just drove it out of here. Nothing better than when the ball jumps off your bat like that. And now it's Vidal Bruhan.
Misses inside. inside. And the count even one and one. Dave Lawrence behind the plate today. Consistent and pretty accurate with the balls and strikes. Yeah, he's one of those guys, Spook, that just keeps the game moving. Nothing overly unique about the strike zone that he calls. And as a result, he's appreciated by both sides. Chris, do players ever change their approach in meaningful ways based on who's umpiring, or is it good to just be aware of tendencies so you're not that surprised? I'd say the latter, because pitchers got to pitch to his strengths regardless. The hitters got to hit to his strengths. So you're aware of it, but you have to just hunt for what you can handle. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Nick Fortes. Here's a rocket out to left. Calls it in, and there's two away. As the game has moved along, we see more and more information supplied by teams about the umpires. I've been in clubhouses where they have pictures of all four guys, nicknames, hometowns, and as well, hobbies listed, just so you can kind of small talk the umpire a little bit. <laughs> That's great. Next offering is downstairs. Two down, base is empty, but one run across. Bottom half of inning number two. Right through there for a strike. Still two and two after the foul ball. Two down, nobody on. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. That is the inning. But the solo shot stretches their lead even further. It's now 3-0. All set for the start of the inning. And now the first baseman, the first baseman Owen Miller. Owen Miller. As he turns on the rubber, and with that good live arm delivers. That's in there. Strike one. Well, we call that keyholing. Even though it's right there and looks pretty good, hey. if he doesn't love it, he's not going to oh. swing that early in the count. And now the lefty. Ground ball, left side. Whips it to first. Leadoff hitter gone in the third. Jackson Chorio up now for the Brewers. Fastball in for a strike. It's 0 and 1. The Marlins leading by three. We're here in the top half of inning number three. And that's outside. One and one. Outside. One strike. Ground ball up the middle, and that chance handled. Safe at first as they can't make the play. Boom, that's staying within his game right there. I mean, this speedster gets the infield single, and now he's on base to possibly do some damage. I love seeing what guys like this can do to disrupt the game once they get in a position to do so. Checks over to first, back safely. And now Sal Fraley. Wide throw, and it gets away. And they won't get him, and he goes first to third on the error. Well, kind of the story of their season so far. Things just not clicking into place. Fundamentals on all sides of the ball are lacking, and it's tough to win games at this level if you're not playing clean baseball as a team. Runner on at third, one gone. That one drifts inside. That misses. Three and oh. Really close pitch down around the knees there, and you could see him asking where it missed. Probably doesn't agree, but it appears he's ready to move on to the next pitch.
That clips the corner. Left hand hitter waits. There's a swing and a drive. That one's carrying. And it hits the base of the wall. In comes the run from third. It's 3-1. The relay, the tag out. Absolutely perfect execution of the relay right there to cut him down at third. And he probably should have shut it down at second base and been happy with the double, but it took a great play to get him. You just have to tip your cap. And now it's William Contreras. He struck out swinging at his first at bat. And yeah, that's outside. 1 and 0. Oh. You have to be creative pitching against bad ball hitters. You got to add some velocity, subtract at times. Just avoiding the heart of the plate isn't always going to be enough. Guys like this can hurt you with pitches you wouldn't expect him to swing at. Foul ball. Two out spaces empty. The 1 1 is fouled off. Swing at a ball lifted to center field. Chisholm settles under it and makes the catch. And that is that. One run, two hits, one error, and no one left on. We move on to the bottom of inning number three. It's the Marlins three and the Brewers one. And now the Lydia, DH, the Brian Marlins. De La Cruz. His splits between yeah. April and May there. The wind of the pitch. It's been a rough start on the mound for this guy. This third inning is so important for him to get on track, turn the page, settle in, do all those things you need to do to give your team a little bit of length in this one. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. And Whoa, another ball. Right Swings and misses. And it's two, two and two. Two strike. That's to third. Monasterio sends it to oh. first. One gone, bottom of the third inning. The first baseman, number nine, Josh Bell. Josh Bell at the plate now. Singled and scored his first time. Ball yeah, that's one. too high. Counts one and oh. That Three. one finds the zone. And a count one, one, one and one. Right. One down, base is empty. So a foul ball makes it one and two. The pitch. Fights that one away, still one and two. On its way to the corner. And it's off the wall, but foul. And a one two. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. Two away. The right fielder, number two outs, base is empty. Jesus Sanchez now at the plate. Singled and drove in a run his first time through. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left handed hitter. Big swing and a miss. Two pretty nasty sliders to get this hitter in an 0 2 count. If you're up there at the plate, you got to look up in the zone and spit on anything that's down. Two down, nobody on. Here in the last half of the third. That one misses ball. the zone. Two now one and two. That's they tried cool. to get him to chase on a slider down and away. <laughs> Two outs. 
He goes down looking. Miami down in order. And the score stays 3-1. to one. Back here in Miami as we go to the top of the fourth. And the batter will be the shortstop. Willie Adamas. The pitch. And that is in for a strike. And it's 0-1. Well, he's been incredibly efficient in this one. First pitch strike percentage over 70%. That's well above league average, and that's what's allowed him to pitch well up until this point. And they get a Thomas for the out. Couple of pitches and a quick out. Next for Milwaukee, Joseph Ortiz. Grounded out his first time. Swings through that one. Wow, no fair oh, right there. I mean, that slider didn't move to the very last moment. Incredibly That's difficult to pick that up. Just kind of have to tip one your ball, cap on that strike. pitch. Base is empty, one away. Top half of inning number four. So a foul ball makes it one and two. I want to start that load a little bit sooner because of the good velo. Next ball, offering right. upstairs. It's a good take. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. One down, base is empty. Battling here as he fouls it away. And yeah, that's outside. Count. Full count now. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at bat. Well, that's a nice job of grinding out that at bat. Saw a lot of pitches and ends up drawing the walk. Very gritty. Swings and sends a rocket to right. Makes the grab, and there's two out. Not fooled at all right there. He was clearly all over it, but sometimes you hit it too hard and right at someone. You're looking for one of those loop hits to get a knock sometimes. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Blake Perkins. 0 for 1. He struck out swinging last time. Not even close there. And that's ball one. Wouldn't chase that time. It's getting squeezed a little bit here late. Just missed. Andrew Monasterio to bat next. Ortiz leads off first with two down to the inning. And there's the automatic. Generally, second, third time through the lineup, you want to be able to lean on those secondary pitches and command them. Looks like he's doing a nice job of it. And ball four to a board. Not what he wanted to do there, Boo. That keeps this inning alive and gives this offense a good chance to cut into their deficit. Making a move at second base. Coming in as the pinch runner, Bryce Terrain. Now the third baseman, Andrew Monasterio. Out towards left center. And that'll fall for a base hit. In comes the run from second. They trail by one. It's 3-2. Well done. Drives in the run. That ball right there landed in what they call a no man's land, meaning it's not really a spot on the field where you can expect anyone to get to it easily. I mean, it's a tough play going back for the shortstop, but also for the outfielders trying to come in. they got to go a long way as well. Really important at bat coming up now. Miller in the box now. Takes strike one. Next offering is down low. 
two walks in the inning already and he just doesn't seem comfortable out there like he can find the right mechanics and then repeat them that one not close and a count two and one could be some action here on this next pitch couple runners on probably a challenge pitch coming the two one that one out to right and that's the third out but the RBI single pushes across a run. It's now a 3-2 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Now into the ball game on defense, Bryce Terang. He'll now play second. second Number two. Right. Well, one run game. And at the play for Miami, Jake Berger. Outfield deep here, trying to prevent anything over their heads. The pitch. And nope. a curve outside. misses outside. Top of the zone for a called strike. The 1 1. That one pushed foul. And now two and two. Hammers that one deep left field and forget it. He circles the bases and they tack one on the board. It's 4-2. A good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. Now it's going to be Nick Gordon. Not one close with that one. Ball one. Nobody on, nobody out. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. The 1-1. One, one. On the ground to the left. Tosses to first. One away. That ground ball may have him back on track after the homer. The second baseman. Here's the second baseman, Otto Lopez. He's already homered here in this one. Swing and a high fly ball down the left field line, but hooking foul. Had a good nope. eye there. Now this is in the air down the line. Fralin makes a nice run of catch. Now batting shortstop. Vidal. Two outs, base is empty. Vidal Bruhan, the next up for the Marlins. Just off the inside edge. That's down and in. Well, he looks more focused at the plate and working the count after that first at bat strikeout. That one's spoiled, and the count now two and one. Two down, nobody on. And that one pulled foul. And a pitch. Fights it off. He'll see another. Kicks and deals. That's towards center. Drifts towards it. 
And that is the third out of the inning. Marlins had another with the solo shot. It's now 4-2. Major League Baseball is on the show. Now, and on the mound, the closer, Tanner Scott. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. Spin rate's very high, and it just breaks a ton. The pitch. Chorio stands in now and watches strike one. Next pitch is outside. And that skips in the dirt. Two and one now. And he chases a high fastball there. Wow, good luck catching up to that one. And a swing and a miss. Now one away. No, oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's not just the pitcher. It's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Fralick batting with one down, takes a strike. One down, base is empty. Pitch misses, and the count is one and one. That clips the inside corner for a strike. Swag and a miss. The velocity blasted it right past him. This is definitely what a team likes to see out of their closer. Come in and just destroy all hope. First two batters, two strikeouts. See if he can strike out the side. Contreras in the box again. Takes the strike. Well, this is just par for the course these days. Huge fastballs coming out of the bullpen. Comes up empty. That's strike two. One strike away. Not even close there. And it's one and two. It's in and out of his glove. He's safe. I think he got a little casual on that play and took it for granted a little bit. So maybe just as much of a mental mistake as a physical one. And with two outs, that's a tough one to swallow for the entire defense. Here's the shortstop at the play. Willie Adamas. Swings through that. On one. Tying run at the plate. Pitch misses there. And now it's even one and one. The shortstop takes a ball. And here it comes. That one off the bad part of the bat. Just a lazy fly ball. And that'll fall for a base hit. Throw stops the lead runner at second. Two on and two out. Well, those kind of lucky soft hits will always make you smile. He clearly didn't catch that one on the big part of the bat. Just kind of muscled it out there. And you know, on the mound, it can be pretty frustrating for a pitcher. But you just kind of have to expect those to drop in there sometimes. 
This is Bryce Terang. Entered the game as a pinch runner. First plate appearance for him here. And there's a the ball. Count one and oh. So the tying run at second. Fought off foul. The pitch. They're down to their final strike. He's been able to go inside as well as outside, effectively working both sides of the plate in this at bat. Got him looking. And that is the ball game. Whether you're a season ticket holder or you just come to a couple of games a year to see your team win at home, there's just something special about that. Good job by this team to get it done for the hometown fans. And your final 4-2 for Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show. I'm John Shambi. Thanks for joining us.